Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. He's good all the time. Amen. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. You know, I've been I've been thinking about possibly doing a part two to the the seal of the Most High. Thinking about doing a part two to the seal of the to the uh, the seal of the Most High. Amen. Because uh, let me turn let me turn this volume up. Let me turn this volume up. Amen. I have to turn this volume up. Amen. Well, like I've said, uh, the Lord has been leading me to do a part two to the seal of the Most High. I believe I'm going to do a part two to the seal to the seal of the Most High because I believe that we need uh, some more clarification, Amen, from God, Amen, about this because there's still, uh, I believe, some confusion. I know we're not going to be able to clear up. All the fog, amen. All all the fog concerning the seal of the most high. Amen. But uh I know seminary school, seminary, amen, and some uh some of the mega pastors and, and some of these commentaries, amen, has has basically uh misconstrued uh 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 or some kind of way uh baffled I our uh Understanding the current uh, concerning the seal of God, and uh, I believe I'm gonna uh, teach on it uh, some more. Amen. Because we we still we still for some reason we 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 believe that uh, works, amen, uh, plays a role in uh, staying keeping the seal of God. Amen. Amen. But like I say, I I, I believe that we, we got to focus on what Jesus. Uh, what Jesus said, Amen. What Jesus uh, said and what He have said, Amen. Concerning uh, no man can pluck us out of His hand, neither the Father's hand. And uh, we got to understand that Jesus said, "Those that believe in Him, they have eternal life." Amen. They have it now. They have it now. Amen. And if it's eternal, Amen. It's not uh, temporary uh, life. It's it's eternal life, Amen. If they have it now, that means that they have it, and if that which they have is eternal, they cannot they cannot lose that, Amen. Amen. Yeah, we we we're gonna do a further, further teaching on that, Amen. Because I've been uh, looking at some of the prophets of old, Amen. We got to understand that uh, uh, there are times, Amen, when the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's on a person. Amen. And not in a person. <laughs> Ooh, listen to what I just said. There are times when the Holy Spirit is on a person and not in a person. Amen. That 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 right there is a big difference. If it's on you, you're not sealed. Amen. With the Holy Spirit of promise. But if it's in you, amen, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise and you cannot you cannot lose that. Amen. That's why I believe the confusion, amen. That's where I believe the confusion is. We don't understand, amen, that the Holy Spirit can be on you, amen, amen, as you 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 walk with the Lord, amen, as you you, you coming into, amen, uh, uh, your faith with the Lord, amen. Go back and uh, study, amen, uh, the Apostle Paul, amen. The Apostle Paul had the uh, Spirit of God on him, amen. And God removed that spirit. He took it off of him. Amen. So the spirit can be on you one minute and off of you the next minute. Amen. But seminary school has really has really uh messed a lot of us up. Amen. Concerning that we got the uh the Bible said that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So if he if he put his spirit up on them back then, he still does that same thing today amen if we go back and look at the disciples i ain't gonna go too much into it go back and look at the disciples amen uh god uh, uh with jesus he blew he blew on them amen amen the spirit of god amen they had the spirit of god on them 
on them, amen, but the Spirit of God was not in them, amen, until uh, the day of Pentecost, amen, when they were sealed, actually sealed. If you go back and look at any of the, the uh, apostles, amen, once they were sealed, none of them fell from the faith, amen. <laughs> the ones that were sealed, the ones that was in the upper room, go go look at that and, and, and let me know if you find one, amen, of them that had fallen, amen. Amen. From the faith after they had been sealed. Amen. See, Judas had the Holy Spirit on him, but he didn't have it in him. You know, Judas was one of the ones that uh, he was one of the ones that actually uh, did miracles. Amen. And the reason why he could do those miracles is because he had the Holy Spirit on him and not in him. Amen. We we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna talk about some things concerning that because the Lord has been leading me in that in that direction. Amen. Because a lot of times we'll pick scriptures out. In the New Testament and not leave it in its context, amen. And we we, we get things uh, misconstrued, amen, concerning the scriptures. And we think that we have to uh, do something, amen, and that what Jesus done wasn't good enough, amen. But we have to add to what Jesus done, amen. <laughs> We got I mean, this. This is a really good good teaching. But I, I'm 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 really thinking about doing. Uh, uh, the Lord is leading me to do another uh part two to the seal of the most high and i believe it's, it's very much needed because we need to know that once we are saved and once we have been once we believe the word and once we've been you know saved and everything amen and coming to the faith amen we need to know that once god seals us amen that's that's really it amen there, there is no losing your salvation that's like saying you know i i'm i'm not even gonna really talk about it right now but we'll talk about it we just say that the God is good, amen. And all the time, God is good. Anyway, I'm getting ready to do a little study, amen, concerning uh, the Word of God. I mean, my, my, my listen, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm pulled in like two or three different directions, amen. And uh, I'm trying to settle down here and focus on one thing, amen. But uh, I'm getting ready to do a study on the Word of God, the importance. The importance of, of, uh, of, uh, of the word of God, the importance of the word of God, just plain and simple, the importance of the word of God. I'm getting ready to do a study on that. And I basically I started on it uh, this morning and I stumbled across something. Amen. I, and I said, I'm going to do this. Look, Lord, have me do this little video. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> bring something to your attention. Amen. That you may have not seen or you you may have seen. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. All the time. We're going to go to Deuteronomy right quick. Chapter 8. You remember I did that lesson, uh, what the Hebrews don't know, part 1 and 2. Amen. But th this is not about that, but uh, there are some similarities to, uh, to what I'm about to bring forth. Amen. Uh, concerning Deuteronomy chapter 8 and Matthew chapter 4. Amen. I remember telling you that what, what Jesus, what, uh, God said that Israel was his son israel was his son he was asking pharaoh to let his son go amen but <clears throat> we're gonna and we're gonna look at a few things amen but this area is pertaining to the word of god because that's what i was pretty much that's what I, I was studying amen with the lord but let's let them let's let's read some of it amen hallelujah thank you jesus <laughs> glory hallelujah god is good all the time the Lord is good. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Anyway, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let's look at it. Starting at verse 1. I believe we're going to go and conclude at verse 4, I believe. It says, All the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1 through 4, I believe. All the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do, that you may live and multiply. And go in possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. He said, and you shall remember all the way which the Lord thy God led you these 40 years in the wilderness. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, and you shall remember. Amen. Amen. Sometimes, amen, it's good. According to this scripture, listen, it's good to remember. Amen. It's good to remember. Amen. Where the Lord has brought you from. Amen. Listen, it's good to remember and reflect on how the Lord has delivered you, amen, out of certain bondages, amen. I know we are constantly being delivered from certain things. I know I am, amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
I know I'm I'm constantly being delivered from things. Amen. I just thank the Lord from from for for delivering me. Amen. For certain things, delivering me from marijuana. Hallelujah. Delivering me from alcohol. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you. He good. I'm telling you. Listen, I don't even have a, I don't even have a taste. Amen. Listen, I don't have a taste for alcohol. I don't listen. I can drive by a liquor store right now. Amen. Uh, uh, they call it spirits. Amen. Some of these places, but it's all that's what it is. Amen. Listen, I can drive by a liquor store. Amen. And listen, I don't have no problems. Amen. I, listen, I don't have no uh, inkling in me. Amen. That would that 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 has an urge for alcohol or marijuana. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, I can I can be driving and and man. You know what's it? I smell like I know what it's, I still know what it smell like, but I don't listen. I don't have a desire for it in me. Amen. Listen, I listen. My listen. My body don't even have an urge for it. it listen, it's the urge is dead. Amen. <laughs> Thanks to the to the spirit of God and His Word, the urge is dead. I don't listen. It's dead. I don't have a taste for alcohol, beer, or, or, or liquor. Amen. I don't have a taste for it. It's dead. The earth is dead. I'm telling you. The Bible says who the sun says free is free indeed. Listen. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, you know how much money, you know how much money I done wasted on, on, on marijuana and, and, and alcohol? Amen. Listen, I ain't no longer got to spend my finances on, on, on alcohol and marijuana no more. Amen. Because I've been delivered. Huh? I've been set free. I ain't in bondage to that no more. Amen. Huh? Hallelujah. But I'm still working on other things. The Lord is working on other things with me. Amen. We're going to be constantly being delivered, I believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God's always going to show us something. Amen. That we need to work on. Amen. Whether it's pride or whether we need to humble ourselves in certain areas. Amen. Whether it's our that tongue. Amen. <laughs> Listen. Whether it's, it's an unforgiving heart. Amen. <laughs> Uh, whether we're having problems, some, some of us are having problems with just loving, just loving people. Amen. Because a lot of us stem from the way way you grew up or the way it, it, it got a lot to do with your background. Amen. Your household. Amen. Maybe a lot of anger in the household. Mama may have been angry. Daddy may have been angry. You know what I mean? And you never, listen, you never did get a chance to experience that that love. Amen. Uh, but who the son says free is free indeed. God would listen. The Holy Spirit would teach us all things. Huh? Teach you how to love. Amen. Teach you how to love. Teach you how to love. Amen. That's what I like about, you know, whatever you're missing in your life. Amen. The spirit. Amen. God makes up for that. Amen. Huh? Huh? He makes up for, for a parent being lost. Amen. When you was a, lost in, in, in your family, when you was a kid, you may have, didn't have a mother. Huh? May didn't have that mother, cause a mother that's that, that 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 motherly love. Amen. You probably didn't get none of that when you was growing up as a kid. Huh? Some of us didn't have that that manly figure. Amen. In the house. In the house. Amen. But the spirit of God will teach you how to have a back. Listen, he'll teach you. He'll give you boldness. Amen. He'll give you a backbone. Huh? When you didn't see it in the household, God will come along with His spirit and give you boldness. Huh? In love. You see what I'm talking about? That's why it's, the listen. That's why it's so important, Amen. To 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 search out the Spirit of God and stay in that Word and prayer. Amen. God will God God will act, make up the difference. Amen. That ain't what I was going to talk about though. But I don't know where that came from. Somebody may have needed that. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Verse 2 says, And you shall remember all the way which the Lord thy God led you these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you. Huh? Listen. God, the Bible says he led them in the wilderness. He led them through the wilderness to humble them. To humble them. Huh? Oh, man. That's some, look. L let, me, let me read on some more of this first. <laughs> he led them 40 years in the wilderness to just to, listen, to humble you. And to prove you, huh? To test you. That word prove means to test you. God took them through the wilderness, huh? To test them, huh? And to, to humble them, huh? To know what was in. Listen. He, listen, God, listen, God. Let me read that. Let me read that again. Let me read this some more. 
It says, you shall remember all the way which the Lord thy God led you these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to prove you, to test you, huh? to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. huh? See, God, listen, God would, would listen, God would test you, amen, to see whether or not you're going to keep his word or not, huh? Huh? He already, listen, God, God already know whether or not you're going to keep his word, huh? But he wants you to know why you ain't keeping his word, huh? He won't, listen, he won't, he wants you to know why you're not keeping his word. That's why he's sending you through those tests and those trials, amen. He's, he's trying to humble you, amen, huh? And he's testing you, huh? You're up on the test right now. Amen. God wants you to see what's in your heart. See, it's the oh um, my it's the test, amen, that, that shows you what's in your heart. God already knows what's in your heart. But when God puts you up underneath the fire, when he put that fire underneath you, amen. Huh? When he put that fire, listen, your heart is gonna be revealed. Huh? What's in your heart? <clears throat> what's in your heart is gonna be revealed. Whether or not you're gonna believe God or not. Huh? I'm telling you. That's the first thing he did when he brought them out. <laughs> huh? Huh? And remember his his presence. Amen. They was to follow his presence. So they were following the cloud that led them by day and the cloud of fire, pillar of fire that led them by night. So they were following the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. They were following the Spirit of God. Amen. It, it reminds me, it reminds me when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And the, and the Bible said that it was a, a, a dove-like uh, 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 appearance that came down out of heaven, Amen. But, but it was the Holy Ghost <clears throat> or the Holy Spirit, huh? And the Bible said immediately he was led. Immediately it said immediately he was led into the wilderness. Listen, just like the children of Israel when they came out, Amen, huh? God led them. Listen, He said Israel is my son. I told you that everything is. Sim Listen, that that's there is symbolic. The same thing happened to Jesus. Huh? The same thing happened to Jesus. You better understand, when that spirit come upon you, you're going to get tested. You're going to be led. Amen. By the, that's why, I, listen, a lot of us ain't, lot of, lot of, lot of us ain't being tested because, listen, we're not following the leading of the spirit of God. You Listen, in order to be tested, the way God wants you to be tested, you need to follow the Holy Ghost. You need to follow the Holy Spirit. Jesus had Jesus was led to the wilderness. The children of Israel were led to the wilderness by the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. They had to follow, huh, in order to be tested. Amen. Listen, a lot, lot, lot of y'all don't want to go. A lot of y'all don't want to be tested by the Lord. That's why you turn around and, and you go back because you can't endure the test. When the Holy Spirit start leading you, amen, and you start seeing what you're going to have to go through, amen. Huh? But you, what you're going through is for you. And later on, it's going to be for somebody else. What you're going through is for you. The testing is for you. Huh? So God can show you what, what you need to deal with in your heart. Amen. Let's look at this some more. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. It says, and you shall remember all the way which the Lord thy God led you these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to prove you to know what is in thy heart, whether thou wilt keep his commandments or not. Huh? God's going to test you to see if you're going to keep his word. Huh? He's going to test you. Amen. Huh? See, the spirit of God is probably on you, but not in you. Huh? Probably on you, but not in you to test you. Amen. Huh? To get what's in the in your heart out of your heart. Amen. The Bible said he's got to replace that heart with a new heart. Hey! He got to replace that heart with a new heart. Amen. And that's one of the ways he's going to do it. He's going to take you through testing. He's going to take you through the fire. I'm telling you. Holy Ghost. I don't know where all that come from, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Huh! Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and listen. Verse 3. Let's read verse 3. It says, And he humbled you. And suffered you to hunger. Listen. And he humbled you. And suffered you to hunger. Let me look that word up. Humble right quick. Boom. Let me look it up. Humble. Means to. To be self abased. To. Huh. To, to afflict. To chasten self. Huh. Huh. To deal hardly with. Huh. This is what he. That word. That word. Let me go back. What's the name? That That, that word. And he humbled you in verse 3. Deuteronomy 8, verse 3 now. And he humbled you. Huh? 
and suffered you to hunger. Meaning he 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 caused you to 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 abase yourself. He caused you to to be afflicted. Your flesh, Amen. He caused your your flesh to be humble, Amen. He broke. He, he he's what is he doing? He's breaking that flesh, huh? Because he just brought you. Listen, he just brought. He's bringing you out of bundance. So he's got to break. He's got to break that. He's got to break you. He's got to listen. He got to break you, huh? He got to break you. He's got to break you. So basically, he he put them on almost. You might well say he put them on a fast. <laughs> Look at that. Amen. It's a, and he humbled them and and suffered and you to hunger, huh? He de listen. He dealt with they they hunger. He dealt with that. Listen. He dealt. He listen. He was killing that flesh, huh? Huh? He put them boys. Listen. He put them boys. He put Israel on a fast, so to speak, huh? He put them on a fast. <laughs> Straight up out of Egypt. They were using, yeah, that's why they was whining and complaining about the food that they was eating back there in Egypt. The leeks and the onions and, and all that good stuff they was eating. Amen. And God brought them out of there, out of there and put them on a fast. Huh? To break, to break them down. He had to break their flesh down. Because they were used to, listen, they were used to so many things. And when you, when you first come to the Lord, come to Christ, amen. Your, your flesh done built up an appetite for the things of the world. And God has to, he's got to humble that flesh. He's got to break that thing down. Amen. But you got to be willing to be led by the spirit of God. Huh? You got to be with, listen, they had to follow the cloud by day in the pillar by night. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. Huh? Huh? You got to be willing to be led. Amen. Let the Lord do it. Let him do it in your life. See, because he, listen, the Holy Spirit knows just to test Listen, he know just the test you need to get that stuff out of your heart and to kill your and to kill that flesh. He knows he know the exact thing you need. That's why it's so spirit so important to listen to the spirit of God when he's leading us and guiding us. Amen. Huh? Huh? He ain't doing nothing but bringing us closer into the image of, of, of Christ. That's what he's doing. He's guiding us, teaching us. Let's go back to verse three. And he humbled, and he humbled you, and suffered you to hunger, huh? And fed you with manna, huh? They had one. Listen, they had one, this one particular thing to eat until God decided to get them something else, huh? He said, and fed you with manna which you know us not. Neither your, listen, your your dad and them didn't even know nothing about this. What I'm giving y'all, huh? And you don't, you ain't never seen none of this either. Well, God was giving them with something that they ain't never seen before or never heard of. Huh? 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 Amen. Huh? He was giving them something that they was they was unfamiliar with. Amen. A lot of us are unfamiliar with the Spirit of God. We need to get familiar with the Spirit of God. Huh? See, we don't we don't we don't like the unfamiliar. We know that the Spirit of God is gonna lead us into the unfamiliar. Huh? But all he's doing is he said, "Listen, he's just trying to he's trying to break you down, trying to get that stuff out of, out of our heart." Amen. That stone. Listen, he got to break up the follow ground. Huh? He got to break up the follow ground to give us a new heart. Amen. So we can be sealed. I don't see. I just the Holy Spirit just throw that in there. He just throw that in there. See, did I say something about uh, Saul? Yeah, go study. Go look at Saul when, when the Spirit of God was on Saul. And the Bible says that he removed his spirit from Saul and an evil spirit visited Saul. And David had to come and play a inst string instrument for Saul in order to soothe him, soothe that, to dry that, I guess, dry that spirit out. Amen. But anyway, but God ended up putting his spirit on Saul again after that. Never, never seen that. Before. I never seen that before. But after he removed the spirit from Saul, an evil spirit came upon Saul and David was will come and play. You want me to soothe Saul, Saul. But anyway, God had placed his spirit on Saul again. Amen. And Saul began to prophesy because Saul was after David. And he had sent some men after David. And what God did, he put his spirit on them. And they began to prophesy. Every time David would send somebody, I mean, Saul would send somebody after David, God would put a spirit, his spirit on them. And they would begin to prophesy when they met David. And he ended up, and, and, they, and, and Saul was like, what was this going on? So, so Saul went on his own and God put that spirit on him. Amen. His spirit on him again after he had removed it. Amen. So the spirit can be on you one minute and not on you the next minute. Huh? 
It can be on you one minute and not on you another minute. Amen. You got to understand what I'm saying. See, you you can have a you 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 can have a you can have a spirit on you but not in you. You see, what I'm, even in the, even in the, even today, you can have a spirit on you. The Bible said that God is the same today, huh? And forever, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change. Amen. But these scholars, when you go to these seminary schools, they'll say, well, you know, he put the spirit on him, some, you know, because uh, the, the spirit wasn't able to abide on the inside of him at that time, which that's true. Amen. But they never tell you that he still does the same thing today. They never tell you that part. Amen. They never tell you that part. Huh? The spirit, he'll reside on you first. Amen. Before he, he moves on the inside of you. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? Because he got to be, listen, he got to be with you some kind of way to, to help you. Amen. Until he can move in on us. Listen, we're going to do it. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to do that video. We're going to do that. We're going to do another. We're going to, Spirit going to do another video on that. The, uh, the seal of the most high. Amen. Because we need to get a better understanding. Some of y'all are already pretty much getting the understanding. Amen. Of, of that. It's not about works. Amen. It's a gift from God. Amen. Huh? We didn't see it. We, we listen, we didn't receive it. Amen. By works. Huh? We didn't receive it by, by works. Amen. We received it because we believed the word. We put our faith in, in, in the word of God. That's how we received it. Huh? Huh? Hallelujah. You can go read, you can go study the book of Acts. Paul would be preaching. Amen. Huh? He would be preaching. Huh? And the spirit will fall on them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And then they'll say they received the Holy Ghost just like we did in the upper room. Just because of the preaching and the teaching of the word. The spirit will fall. Huh? I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Amen. Let's, let's get back to this. Let's get back to this. Amen. What was that? Verse 3. And he said, and he humbled you and suffered you to. So he put them on a fast. God did. Huh? See, they had to depend on God. Listen, you got to depend. You got to depend on God. They, when God brought them out, listen, they had to depend on God. You know what I'm talking about? They had to, be, they had to be, listen, you got to depend on God to deliver you. Huh? I'm going to keep saying it. Amen. Because that's what it's about. It's about it's about our souls. Huh? About being delivered. Huh? And walking in, listen, and by walking in power, in the spirit of God. It said, and he humbled you and suffered you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you knew it's not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make you know that man, listen, that he might make you know that man do not live by bread alone. Huh? <clears throat> that man do not live by bread only. But every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord, do man live? Listen, huh? He had to teach them something, huh? He had to teach them something, huh? Listen, listen. I know your ice box is probably full of all kind of delicious food, huh? Huh? But I'm telling you, amen, that the word of God, amen, is better than anything you got in your ice box. <laughs> I'm telling you. Listen, he said, man does not live by bread only, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, we think it's the food in the icebox, amen, that's going to revive us, huh, huh, that's going to repair us. We think it's the food in the icebox, huh? Let me look up this word. Let me look, let's look up this. See, we got to get off of this, this we got to get off of this and, and begin to feed on the word of God, amen. We focus so much on this on this outer shell. Amen. Huh? Focus so much on this outer shell. Huh? But God said, man, don't live by. Let's see what that word live means. Let me look that up. <clears throat> that word live means to revive. Huh? See? That meant, listen, you think that you think that food is, is what's gonna revive you. But no, it's the word of God that's gonna revive you. Huh? Huh? You listen, you think that food is what's gonna give you the promise. Amen. In that refrigerator, that's gonna give you the promise. No, it's the promises are in the word of God. Huh? Huh? See, you think it's the food that's gonna nourish you, huh? But the nourishment is in the word of God. Huh? Listen, it's not in the 
It's not in the broccoli. Ha! You understand? It's not in. Listen, it's in the word of God. The Bible says that the word of God is like medicine. Huh? Huh? It's like medicine. You better understand what I'm saying. Huh? Huh? The word, listen, the word is more powerful than anything that you can eat. Huh? The word, listen, I'm going to say that again. The word is more powerful than anything that you can put, that you can eat. Huh? I'm trying to tell you. And then it also says to, it says to repair. See, the word of God will repair. Listen, we think it's the food or the pills or the drugs that they give us. That's not what this said. That word, that word live means to repair. It says that, that, that the word will, will, will repair. Amen. It'll repair your body. Hmm. It'll re listen, that word means to restore. It says it'll restore your body. The word will, will, will restore your body. That's why the Bible says man don't live by bread alone. Huh? But every word about that that's deeper than what we think. Huh? That's why, listen, that's why, listen, the Bible said that, listen, didn't people didn't even get sick 40 years walking around? Huh? What was God showing us? That the word of God, listen, the man said, thou has sent thy word <clears throat> and you and healed them. You sent your word and healed them. Huh? I'm trying to tell you that's what he's saying. Huh? He's saying that the word of God, the word of God. It's more powerful than the food you got in your refrigerator, or that, or any pill, or, 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 or listen, they get, they can give you at, at, at the drugstore, or, or the whole food store, or, or the health food store, huh? The word of God, huh? The word of God is top of the line. I'm telling you, the word of God is top of the line. I'm telling you, like, we just don't apply the word like we need to apply the word. We need to we, just like listen, just like you go in that in in that bathroom in your house, amen. And you get in that mirror, amen. And you start applying certain things on your to your skin on your uh, on your skin or on your face because you see something occurring on your face, and you're trying to cure it, amen. Listen, we got to use the word of God just like that. Take them scriptures and lay them down, and start rubbing them on it, huh? Start rubbing them scriptures. Listen, these people walk around for forty years and nothing, nothing wear out. These people didn't catch a cold or nothing. You told them talking about, huh? You better start drinking some of them scriptures, eating some of them scriptures, huh? Jesus talked about drinking and eating, huh? Huh? He said, take this, eat it, huh? Take this, drink it, huh? I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Amen. Let me let me see if there's anything else in that. Not I'm on. I'm on, I'm on. I got to get back to my, to my, to my. But anyway, yeah. And this also, this is a quote in in, in Matthew. I have some other scripture. Matthew chapter twenty-four. I mean Matthew chapter four. Jesus quoted the same verse, huh? To Satan, he said, "Man don't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God." Satan was trying to get him to turn some stones into bread, huh? The Bible said that angels came and ministered to Jesus, huh? See what I'm talking about, huh? But he was trying to get Jesus to to do something that he he should not be doing. He said, "But but 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 depend on the word of God, huh? Man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's how we ought to be living, huh? Let's go back. Let's go down. To, uh, let's go. Let's go to verse four. It says." Thy raiment wax not old upon you, neither did thy foot swell. Listen, the feet feet didn't swell or none of that. Huh? These see, cause that, that manna was a representation of the word of God. <laughs> of the word of God that they was eating. That boy, listen. Woo wee. Hallelujah. See, that's why we got to have a desire. We need to have a desire and a taste. Amen. For the word of God. Amen. We need a desire and a taste for the word of God. Huh? And, and quit designs so much of these outside things. Amen. We seek more of these outside things before we seek the word of God. We need to seek the word of God. Huh? We need to follow the, the leading of the spirit of God. He's right there. He's on you. If he's not in you, he's on you. Huh? If you ain't been sealed yet, he's on you. If, huh? If, if listen, if you're walking and, and, and you, 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 you're seeking God, he's on you. He's not in you. 
If he's not in you yet, amen. Verse 5 says, You should also consider in thy heart that as a man chasten his son, so the Lord also chasten you. That's a familiar passage of scripture right there. Listen to that. It says, You should also consider in thy heart that as a man chasten his son, so do the Lord chasten you. So let's look at. So what the scripture say? Whom the Lord loveth. It said whom the in the New Testament. It say whom the Lord loveth. He chastened. Oh, it's the same same scripture. <laughs> same scripture. Whom the Lord loveth, he chastened. What? Let's look and see what that word chastened means. Let's look it up right quick. <clears throat> it means to correct. That's what he's doing. Listen, when my father used to spank me, what was he doing? He was he was he was. Correcting me, trying to show me my wrong, letting me know that I was wrong, letting me know that I was headed in the wrong direction. Huh? He, that's what he was doing. I'm trying to tell you. He was trying to teach me something. Huh? He was trying to teach me something. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Amen. So that's what God's doing. When he's chastising us, he's correcting us. And so sometimes his correction can be painful. But but we got to understand that it's for our it's, it, listen when my when my dad was, was, used to spank me or whoop me amen I didn't understand it you know because it was painful I didn't understand that he was trying to correct me I didn't understand I knew that I was I did something wrong but I ain't, I didn't understand that he was trying to teach me a lesson he was also trying to teach me so chastisement is it's, it's teaching huh <clears throat> can you be taught Huh? Can you stand to be taught by the Most High? Sometimes it's painful, but he's he's teaching you. You got to say this. This is a teacher. Listen, I know I'm going through. Amen. But the Lord is he's he's, he's teaching me something through this. Amen. I know I may have lost my job. Amen. But he's teaching me something through this. Huh? Huh? I may have lost my child. Amen. But he's teaching me something through this. One of my child might be incarcerated, but he's teaching me something through this. Huh? He's teaching me something. This is a t listen. It's a teaching moment. It's a time for. It's a time to grow in the God. It's a time to grow in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. See, and God want. He's trying. Like I told you, He's trying to. He's. He wants you to see what's in your heart. Huh? He'll bring it out and put it before your face. He got to listen. He got to get you. Get you a new heart. Amen. So we can walk and talk right. Huh? And, and we can be sealed. That's what he's doing. He's getting us to the place that we, so we can be sealed. Huh? With eternal salvation. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Anyway, I hope God has blessed you or encouraged you some kind of way. Amen. But never for, don't ever forget Romans 8.28. The Bible says that all things work together for the good to them that love God and those that are called according to his purpose. Amen. I don't care. Listen, I don't care what you're going through. Amen. I'm going through. Amen. Ha! I'm going through. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, ain't too many people that ain't going through, especially if you're a believer. Amen. You ought to be going through something. Amen. If you ain't going through something, something ain't right. Huh? You, either be, you ought to be going in or, 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 or you ought to be in it. Oh, you ought to be coming out of it. Hallelujah. <laughs> One of them three. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And listen, I don't care what you're going through. Amen. Amen. Some kind of way, God's going to make that thing work out for your good if you love God and you are walking according to his purpose and design. He's going to make that thing work out for your good. Uh, listen, that's a promise. That's, that's what he said. That's what the words say. Hallelujah. Anyway, be blessed. Amen. Be blessed.